Hi, Good everyone. Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you? You know, good. I'm just fine. It's Friday, which is nice. Except I still have to work tomorrow. That's right. I'm sorry. My bad. That's fine. Yeah. It's only my Thursday. Okay. Well, for, you know what? I feel like Thursday, I think we should embrace Thursday. Those of us that work a five day work week, I think we should embrace Thursday as like pre Friday. Okay. I can get you on know, I don't know. Anyway, good morning. Yeah. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. Check out my mug. It is from the Library of Congress. Oops, awesome. There we go. Library of Congress. It is like two toned, so it's like black inside, which is fun. And on the back, it has. Well, maybe this is the front. I don't know. I cannot live without books. It is a quote from Thomas Jefferson. This nice. was a Christmas present from my brother. Uh, he lives in D.C., so my Christmas presents from him this year were from the Library of Congress gift shop, which works great for me. That's perfect. Exactly. I love, I love book gifts. Yes. I know. And that's, yes, that is something that is, uh, I think, appreciated by most librarians. We never get sick of it anyway. Right. Exactly. If it has a book on it, if it looks like a, an old fashioned uh, checkout card, card or a card catalog card or. Yep. Are you I, I, oh, sorry, go ahead. Um, I have started a new collection. <laughs> You, you do you like the that are book related. I, I, I have a whole bunch of them. I, I collect everything. I should, I need to stop. I really, really, really need to stop. But I have started my very own pin collection, like enamel pins. Yes, I have pins too. Maybe one day we'll see them on here because they will yeah. be able to if they could. So they're in, they're in a drawer at my desk at work where I am not this morning. So that's fine. Neither am I, but we're working this out. We're still trying to figure right. out how this is going to go. So, um, we need to get, we need to go to our bearings first. Yeah. Yeah, the cork board behind me at my office that has all the enamel pins and the best type of enamel, enamel pins are certainly book ones or coffee ones. Absolutely. Book coffee combination. Perfect. Just like, like us. Here right? we are. <laughs> Lattes with librarians. Lattes with librarians. Oh, your mug is pretty too. Oh, it's tall, which is. I was not playing around this morning. I needed my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have one mug that's that size and it is, it's the serious one. And then I have my travel mugs that I take to work that are also serious. And um, the one that I have most recently was gifted to me by a friend and um, it keeps the coffee hot just for so long. I need one too, it's awesome. And it's almost dangerous because that means usually I can cut myself off because I'm like, oh, it's not hot anymore. You know, it's cold coffee now and uh, I won't reheat it. it but when it's <laughs> hot all day, mm, yeah, I don't want to be warned. Uh, <laughs> so do we have anyone here with us today? I wonder, please comment if you're uh, with us this morning. Oh yeah, we do. We do have people watching, but um, please comment, say hello, say good morning to us. This is um, new for us. Surprise. Very um, it's very, probably very obvious that we're new at doing this, but um, we are just wanted to start a new, a new way to connect and chat in this era of social distancing. Yeah. Yeah. When we can't really have library programs anymore, but we still want to connect with you. So we thought this would be a great way because I like sitting and talking. Allison likes sitting and talking and enjoying coffee. So why don't we do that with you while you're socially distant from us but in the comments you can chat with us hi carrie good morning to you good morning. so this is just something new that we're trying out we will get better we promise we are still learning this format mm -hmm. um so bear with us while we learn we're, <laughs> we're, still learning. Learning. we're still learning to work our angles and our lighting and <laughs> um, we're still working on getting someone to do full hair and makeup for us every day Right, the library should really just pay for that. Right? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> so yeah, we'll be here hey, every Friday morning, ten thirty. Hope you can join us. Yeah. Um, what? Watch the recording later. <laughs> exactly, and let us know too. Um, like, if you hopped on here to watch this, what were you expecting to see? Um, let us know what you would like to get out of a format like this and out of a discussion like this. Um, Lee and I both are big readers. Uh, I love to talk about books. And I feel like if I had seen this on my Facebook, I would expect to see some book talk. And if that's what you want, let us know because um, we're happy to do that. And if we want to talk about behind the scenes at the library, what's going on there. Um, also, Lee and I are just both very talkative people. 
And uh, hey, Kelsey. Hey, Kelsey's my friend who gave me the mug that I was talking about that keeps things warm. Ooh. Yes, yeah. I know. She's, she's to credit slash blame when I'm hyper. Find um, your life. We're yes. trying. We're trying. Yes, I, I do appreciate a good Tyra Banks quote <laughs> at any time. Right. We will find our light and smile <laughs> our way through this. So, yeah, I guess we should probably introduce ourselves. What do you think? That makes sense. Who are these ladies? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Go first? Sure. I'll go first. Um, I'm Allison Moore. I have worked at the Fairfield County District Library for four years. Um, I am the technical services librarian, which I'll just say it is the best job in the world. Um, sorry, anybody else who's, you know, out there looking for a job, I already have the best one. It's great because I work at the library. I love working at the library. I love I love Fairfield County District Library and I love working there. But in my job, I get to see, I get to place the orders and catalog and see every new item that we purchase. And there's just, it's just magical. Um, technical services librarian is just a strange title. Um, I think if, I don't know, I don't even actually know where it came from, but Technical services, according to the manual for it, are an ongoing maintenance of a library's collection, including collection development, cataloging, processing. And so that's what we do in our department. It's completely behind the scenes. We receive all the new books, all the new DVDs, movies, music, everything. And um, we receive it in delivery. We catalog it, which means we create records for it. So you can find it in our catalog online or um, on the shelves by assigning it a spine number um, or a reading level, if it's an easy reader, that kind of thing. Um, so that's classification. And then we also do some, we do maintenance and repair throughout the library, but we do some maintenance if there's a typo on the spine, which believe it or not, <laughs> certainly happens. Um, things like that, you know, we correct problems and do some problem solving. And so it is just, it is like I said, it is just the best job in the world and I love it. Um, and so that's what brings me here. Um, Leah? Um, I'm Leah Kerrigan. I'm the coordinator of adult services. Um, basically that's everything in the library that's not related to children. <laughs> um, I buy all of the, the books for adults. Um, I have help with selection, um, but I select like all the nonfiction, um, I'm in charge of getting magazine subscriptions, um, software on the computers, like databases, like what we purchase there. Um, uh, all of the e-resources you have, like Overdrive and Hoopla, um, I'm part of selecting those. Um, we do programming for adults and teens. Um, and lots of libraries, teens kind of fall into youth services here. Um, we do more with... Uh, we have them in the adult department. We so we um, we select the the teen materials too. I supervise a staff of about eleven. Um, we man the reference desk at the main library, so we're answering all your reference questions that you call in with, and um, we we find the books like when you place them on hold through the catalog. We're the we're the team that goes out to the shelves and finds them for you. So we do all kinds of stuff in the library. I have been with Fairfield County for almost 14 years. So we and I are 10 years, like we're like 10 years apart, 10 years staggered because yeah. we also went to the same uh, school for our library degree and everything. We're just kind of like 10 years. I'm 10 years in age and 10 years in career. So it's, it's just, <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, so that's who we are. And um, if you have any questions for us or want to know more, by all means, put them in the, the comment box there and we'll see them and we'll address those. Um, so, yeah, today we're just going to talk about the ah. library stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, and I know Leah before was talking about collecting. You did not mention like what is most important about your space at the library. Oh, Yes, my space, <laughs> my, my office at the library, um, it needs to grow in size because um, I have a collection of rubber ducks in my office. It's the most awesome office in the entire department. 
because of the in the entire library system because of the ducks. Allison actually has the best physical office in the building because of her son. I don't really say that, but I I'm, my office is in the basement, so I'm very very jealous of her sunshine. But my office is filled with rubber ducks, so it's the coolest office. Yes, and once we get once we get things situated, we may be able to have uh, some of that going on. Oh, we also need to know what our favorite coffee beverage is. Hmm. Well, oh, I'm so bad at favorites, but I would say that actually, so this morning I'm just, I'm just having coffee with uh, a heavy pour of milk. Um, but my favorite coffee beverage is just a good cappuccino, like a, a strong and well-crafted cappuccino would, I will drive, I will drive far to get one of those. <laughs> I, I I love a cappuccino as well. Today I am just having regular coffee with cream. I do not do milk. That is that's weak, Allison. You need to go with cream. Uh, um, but um, I think mo my go-to coffee order is a white chocolate mocha with um, toffee nut flavor. I love the oh, toffee wow. nut flavor. Mm -hmm. um, so, do you ever drink flavored coffee? Um, I say this because we've been talking about flavored coffee recently and ordering some online and things like that and been getting some excellent recommendations from our commenter about um, different flavored coffees. And so I kind of want to explore that in the near future, maybe on here. I don't know. Right. Yes. I, I have had some really interesting flavors lately. Um, I had a coffee that tasted like, um, it's got a really funny name, like electric something, but it tastes like Fruit Loops. It was... <laughs> Mm. Right, it was just like sure. awesome. So I forget what it yeah. I'll have to look it up, but uh. yeah, I think my dream coffee flavor would be like a very milky coffee that tastes like like Lucky Charms, like cereal milk. Like you have that sugary oh. cereal milk flavor yeah. in it, but um, also coffee. I don't know. Yes. I, suppose I could just dump my cereal milk in it, but for some reason, that's not really what I. I don't think it would be the same. I want to yeah. be professionally flavored coffee that way. <laughs> oh, electric unicorn. That's it. That's it. Bones coffee, electric unicorn. Thank you, Kelsey. That's exactly what knows her coffee. Kelsey knows her flavored coffee for real. <laughs> um, yeah. So, but I like I like my coffee sweet. I'll I'll admit it. I'm very much into sweet coffees. That's totally fine. It's totally fine. Um, I like I like feeling feeling it go through my veins yes. is the level of coffee that I like. I love that first sip where it's hot and you just, oh, you feel it. Yeah. Oh man, Tara's an electric unicorn too. Apparently Tara's also a Bones coffee drinker. Yes. Now, uh, everyone knows. Everyone knew but us. Right. I'm like, Fine. electric something. <laughs> so shall we talk about the library a little bit? Yeah, let's talk about the library. Shall we address the question on everyone's mind? I'll let you address it. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone wants to know when is the library opening back up and when can they come in? We don't know. We just don't know yet. Um, we're still waiting for um, things to work out and it's, it's going to be a little while yet, um, but we don't have an exact date, but keep, posted to, you know, visit our web page, visit our Facebook page. We'll keep you updated. When we have an answer, we'll let you know. Unfortunately, it's just not yet. Yeah. And we just, we're working toward it, but we just have to figure out how to do it safely. We have all the supplies that we need and, you know, make yeah. sure we do it, but we're definitely working toward it. Yeah. We need to get a good supply of, you know, cleaning supplies. We need to have a good stock of that because cleaning is going to be very important. We have to figure out how to maintain um, safe distances from everyone. So it's a process. It's not just, you know, we flip the switch and we're open tomorrow. So. Yeah. And on a totally different note, Tara mentioned that today is National Donut Day, National Donut Day, which is something that I usually celebrate with gusto. And I forgot about because there's a lot of other stuff going on. So I feel like after this, <laughs> <laughs> donut. I think that I think that's a good plan. I think that's a really yeah. good plan. 
Yeah. yeah. So thank you, Tara, for reminding us of that. And Melanie, I also hope that you're able to get a donut today, um, today and every day, really. I hope that we all get to have donuts. Right. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. So. Um, and so, but back to the library, while we are still having our doors closed to the public, we're working very hard behind the scenes. Um, I will say in, in my department, um, we closed, you know, we were closed for many weeks, but during that time, we were still keeping up with ordering new material because we knew we'd open again and we knew we needed those new books. So, and March is like the yes. big month for book yes. before any of this even happened. And I placed our orders um, for March material. I probably called Leah and I was like, Leah, why is every single person who's ever written a book publishing in the month yeah. of March? Because we just, there was so much on that list. And um, so we, oh, we're back. I wonder if we went off. Um, well, we'll just keep going. Um, so we ordered so much stuff and then we had to close. And so when we came back, um, we had basically all that material that we was supposed to have come out in the month of March and April all arrived in like a week or two. And so if you happen to get calls from the library that you had hopes to pick up through curbside pickup, great. I'm so glad you were able to come do that. And then if you got there and it turned out it was like 15 gigantic books, it's because all those books should have come out over the course of many weeks and we got them yeah. all at one time. And I wanted to get them out to you because you had holds on them. So um, that was just the way the cookie crumbled this time around. But that explains why you may have had an immense number of holds. Um, the, but, but some people may be waiting longer than normal for holds um, for a couple of reasons. One, because our delivery service isn't up and running yet. Um, we're hoping to get that up. It, it's supposed to come up and be running again soon, but um, it'll take a while for that backlog of materials to get shipped and for stuff to come in from other locations. But also, um, there were some titles that were supposed to be published in March or April where the publisher said, you know what, let's hold off and publish them later in the year. So some, a lot of books, their, their publication date got pushed. Like there was one, oh. I can't remember it. We got that email about it even. Yeah, yeah, it was it was a big one and it got pushed to, to the end of June. It was supposed to be published March 13th, so. Yeah, and so some, some places pushed their publication because they just couldn't do that publicity. They couldn't do the tours that they needed if it were a big book during the time, during this pandemic time. And then other books, I believe in the future will probably continue to be published because work got backlogged and editing processes didn't take place the way they should. So that that delay may continue. And there also mm -hmm. is gonna be a delay even just in the physical receipt of new books because um, warehouses are working with smaller are working staff. Overtime. Our vendors are working overtime. They were all also closed. Well, not all of them, but some of them were also closed um, for several weeks. And so they had to get back in with reduced staffing, with new safety measures and everything. So there's even books that are still coming out on time. There may be, I actually haven't noticed too much of a delay on things truly, but I feel like it's definitely possible. I've seen it on a couple of titles where the publication date got pushed, but. Or even know. just not even pushed, but we just don't have them yet because. Yeah. Because not, the warehouse hasn't unpacked them or whatever. Yeah. Um, I will say there is one instance though that I've seen of a book being moved up in its publication date. And that is a book by um, Emma Donahue who wrote oh, yeah. Room, Room and The Wonder mm -hmm. and a couple other things, but those are the ones that I've read. Um, and her book is coincidentally written a while ago, but it is about the Spanish flu pandemic of 1918. And um, it, oh, I have the title here actually. Um, it takes place over the course of three days in a maternity ward. And the Spanish flu was um, especially dangerous to pregnant women. And so it take, I think it focuses on the nurse in that maternity ward. It is called Pull of the Stars. And that was due to come out in September, I believe, but it's gonna come out in July now because they were able to power through that editing and try to get it out you know, as soon as possible, just given the subject matter. So who knows what we'll see. They have, they have, they have created the Library of Congress subject heading or coronavirus, I believe, but they're still working. This isn't a whole official process. Things have to be submitted, reviewed by a committee, applied, presented, all these things. Um, they're still working on uh, Library of Congress subject headings for social distancing and some other terms that have arisen during this because you know the books are coming soon. Right, yeah. Be added to dictionaries. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Oh, yeah. So, and hey, if you guys want have any questions or if books are a good thing to talk about on here, let us know and we can definitely do yeah. that and talk about new material. That's definitely easy. Yes, that's that's second nature. So we would love to do that. So yeah. Um one of the did you say something? Oh, I'm hearing sorry. You, apparently. <laughs> Yeah, we would love to hear what 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 it is you want to hear from us. So any ideas or comments you have, by all means, um, let us know. So. Yeah, and the more you guys direct it, the less you have to hear us ramble about what we like to talk about, which it can be all sorts of things across the board. Um, <laughs> from what we dreamed about to uh, what we're doing at home, you know, just we we are very chatty. So um, how's the garden going? Oh, you know, okay. I love gardening. That is that is something to know about me on here. I planted, I mostly do vegetables and herbs, but I do some flowers too. I created a bunch of new beds this year. And two of my three beds are essentially failing. And I'm not exactly sure why. They have the same, they're in the same place. And for some reason, two of them are not doing very well. And so actually, you know, I'll open up on here. Why are the leaves of my pepper plants falling off? I planted peppers every year. And so I don't think I'm like over or under watering them or anything. Like I'm pretty used to that, but the leaves are just dropping straight off. So help me, help me. I'm, I'm inclined to blame the weather because that's just easy yeah. to blame, but you know, I enjoy it. So it's, it's still worth doing, but I would be great if also they didn't all die. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. That would be great. Scott wants to know what rubber duck is my favorite. Um, it's really hard for me to pick. Usually it's just my newest rubber duck. Um, yeah, I've, I've got so many. It's, I counted the other, the other day and I'm very close to 600. Um, I have a duck of the day. It's, I wouldn't say it's my favorite duck. It's probably one of my newer ducks. It's this little unicorn. Oh my gosh. It's such adorable. Like, how can you not love a unicorn duck? Because it's pretty and stabby. Like, how fun is that? <laughs> like, I can be pretty, but I can stab you if I need to. But yeah, pretty and stabby. That's that's. We learned that's a lot about you in that as well. Just in that pick, we learned a lot. My favorite <laughs> duck of yours is the one that you gave me, which is the hot dog shaped duck. And I don't have it here. I'll show it someday. It is amazing. It is a duck, basically like in a hot dog bun. It's awesome. Right? Yeah. I also <laughs> have the the hot dog duck, a taco duck. French fry duck and cheeseburger duck. Like it's those, just, are, those are my favorite set of ducks that you have, which is a hard, I mean, that's a hard thing to pick. You have like all these themed sets and everything, but something about that hot dog duck, cause it has mustard on its back. <laughs> yeah, it's usually my, my favorite duck is my newest duck. I that enjoy all sense. of them. Uh, Kelsey asked if we were gonna have a featured book of the week or anything, which we certainly could do. That's an excellent idea. Yeah, that's I'll write that down do. on my, because, why am I, why do I organize my life the way that I do? Why are my notes for everything on this on, on two sides of an envelope? I don't, <laughs> and these are three meetings worth of notes on this envelope. Um, yes. Book all in one place. And if we have even more notes, you could put them in the envelope. That's, that's why I use the envelope because then I can just I stuff more notes inside it. Yeah. All right. Book of the week. I think that's a great idea. Um, I'm not hungry with our taco tacos, hot dogs. <laughs> And donuts. And ducks. Yeah. Ooh la la. <laughs> what Harry Potter class do you each belong to? Raven well, I'm a Ravenclaw. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think I don't know, like, yeah, when I did the official Pottermore one, I was putting Ravenclaw. Yeah. I, I was too. And I think that one makes the most sense for me. Um, Absolutely. I'm not a Gryffindor. <laughs> I'm occasionally put into Gryffindor, like when I did the BuzzFeed one, feed one oh. they put me in Gryffindor. But anyone who's watching, if you know your house, put it in the yeah, put it in the comments so we can see who's watching yeah. this. I do feel like libraries skew Ravenclaw and Hufflepuff. Oh, definitely, yeah, yeah. Which is, I think, a great group to be among. I really do. Right? Yeah. Smart, kind people. That's who we are. <laughs> great. It's a good group of people to work with. Ravenclaw, Rob. Yes. 
Hufflepuff represents. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yep. I oh, definitely have read the new Harry Potter book. I have not because I have I, to, I think you have to access it on that that website and I haven't done it yet. Um more Raven Claws. Um <laughs> have you read it, Scott? Have you read it yet? Has anyone else read it? Um Ravenclaw and Hufflepuff, Hufflepuff. Hufflepuffs are they make the world go around. Right? Yeah. They're the yeah. doers. They're yeah. the doers, exactly. Yes. They make sure stuff gets done and done right. And then, <laughs> and then everyone gets to be part of it. Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You, gotta, you gotta appreciate that. Man, Leah, we're at 25 minutes. Wow. Good for us. Okay. Yeah. Do we want to talk about anything else? Hmm. Did you plant your flowers? That's certainly not that important, but um, I, know you I, have, plant them. I have some of them planted. Most most of them planted. Well, some of them planted. <laughs> let's not let's not lie. I've got some of them planted. I did take um, some vacation days next week so I can get my flower beds cleared out of all the weeds and planted tomorrow. So well, that's good. And yeah, I think that at this point, taking some vacation to work in the yard, sometimes you just have to do that because you have to work around torrential rain or extreme heat or whatever. Like the plants need you to do the right thing at the right time. And if you're putting them in when it's pouring rain or like really, really hot, they're not going to be happy either. Yeah. And I'm not going to be happy when it's really, really hot. I'm a delicate flower myself. So. I know. Yeah, I know. Me too. I Kelsey wanted to know how to train her cat to be more like a dog. And if we have any books on that topic. Um, I think we do actually have a book on like cat training. We have like, several books on cat training. 636.8. Yeah, we have. There was one book we have. I don't know if we still have it. It's about like getting your cat to dance with you, which I thought was fabulous. Um, I don't know if we still have it because it was really old and it was really weird. The last time I saw <laughs> there were all these crazy pictures of these people dancing and the cats dancing with them. <laughs> Well, um, okay, between now and next week, we'll see if we can track that down. And we'll also see what we can find on the topic of cat training. I do know we have cat training books in that number, but I, do, I don't know exactly in what form you're training. It might just be like general. I think we might have like leash training books too, maybe. Yeah, maybe. maybe. I don't know. Cats are so resistant to be trained. They are. It's an uphill battle. <laughs> Cats do what they want. Kind of like me. <laughs> Yeah. So. But um, yeah, anytime you have questions like that, you can call us at the library and we're happy to, to look and see what we have. Especially now that we're not open to the public at the current moment, um, we know that it's really hard to not be able to browse the shelves. So many people like right. to come in and just browse the shelves. That's how I search for things. You know, I rarely like look for something and then just get it. I always have always gone in and looked around and seen what's nearby and everything and what's new. And I know that that is really hard to not be able to do. Yeah. But you know what? If you call in and talk to us and be like, you know, I want books on this subject. I don't know what I'm looking for. We'll pull stuff for you and have it ready for curbside pickup for you. Like we are happy to do that. Yeah. I've been doing that a lot this week. Yeah, and it's a fun opportunity. Of course, we want things to be, we want everyone to be able to come in, but I think it is a fun opportunity to to try to remember, you know, think about what we have on the shelves and see how we can help people with what we have and maybe give them something they wouldn't have found otherwise because mm -hmm. yeah. they may not have asked. So Yeah, yeah. And we've been doing a lot of like um, reader's advisory. People are like, you know, I really like this author, but I've read all their books. I need some new stuff to read. So like trying to find authors similar to what they like, maybe someone they've never read before. Um, doing all that has been really fun. I've, I've, I've been doing that, finding things for people that they might not have tried on their own. Yeah. So give us give us some more of that. Call in anytime um, and tune in next week. Yeah. We will be here, like I said, 1030 every Friday. So come join us. And until then, you take care. Have a great week. Thank you. Bye-bye.